it's finally time to take a look at the X56 HOTAS from Cytec and see how it is and how it works with Elite Dangerous. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. A couple of months back I bought a new HOTAS hands-on throttle and stick because my old X52 Pro was slowly dying on me, the buttons were beginning to be not as responsive and they were sometimes not working. So I decided to go out and get a replacement before it failed completely. Um, and I ended up buying the uh, X56 and back then I promised I would do a full review of it once I've used it for a couple of months, so that I had some time to get a good feel for the product, feel the find the good, the good, the small, small like things you will not notice right off the box, but that you will begin to notice after you've been using it for um, some time. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's start by having a look at the joystick itself. On the top of the joystick, we have three. Uh, hat switches here, which all have a, uh, a nice tactile feel whenever they're activated, and they're all distinctly different, so you can easily um, you can easily distinguish between them, so you know which one you are using um, without having to look at the, the joystick. There's a single push button, also nice tactile, not that far of a travel. It's very short travel, but has a nice tactile feel whenever it's um, whenever it's activated. All the hat switches here are backlit uh, with RGB LEDs, so you can change the colors of these if you want to. Um, I don't think you can change them individually, I think you change all of them. And, um, and the same goes for the base units, you can change the, the colors there. We're going to look at that in, um, in a little bit. Um, the joystick, of course, is all soft touch plastic, um, so it feels very nice. Quality wise, it feels good. Um, and of course, I have all this uh, this blue accent. And at the base of the, of the joystick, we have the first small issue that um, um, that I've encountered, and that is that per default, this um, this hand rest is very very low. I don't know which type of people they were expecting to use this joystick because they must have expected to it to be people with massive hands, because I have fairly big hands and it was way too low for me. And it's been the same for other people I've talked to, but luckily they do include a um, extension that raises the um, the base slightly and also extends it, which um, I personally feel is pretty much mandatory to use. Um, again, that that depends on on how you like to how they like you feel of your joystick. I personally use it, but that gives the first drawback of uh, of the joystick as well, because on the back of the joystick we have a series of small triggers. We have the main trigger, which again, very short travel time and a small click whenever it's activated. Same thing with the large black pinky switch here. Um, short travel time and give a, a little click whenever it is uh, it is activated. Um, a lot of people have complained that they feel like that pinky trigger there was a was a point of failure because it was so uh, so flimsy. I don't feel like that. I mean, this is a late model. I mean, that's been out for quite a few years, so maybe they've done some quality improvements on it. I at least do not feel like this trigger is about to fall off. I mean, if you, if you really squeeze it, sure, you can break it. But I feel like you really have to try in order to, uh, to break this. It's not something that's just going to break uh, out of nowhere. And then you have a small pinky button down here, and that is originally a pretty nice idea because I use that in Elite Dangerous to change my uh, my firing groups. So I have my main fire, I have my secondary fire on the pinky switch, and I can change my firing groups down there very quickly. So I have all the fire control here on the back of the joystick. But because of this racer that I use to, um, or extension that I use to uh, to raise the base of the uh, of the uh, hand rest, this. Um, button is now partly covered. At least it feels like when you use it that it is partly covered. You have to reach down uh, to, to actually get um, to get a, a proper um, to proper contact with it. So that's a little. I don't know. It feels a little. Um, I don't know. It, it feels like that extension was something they added last minute because maybe they got a lot of reviews. People saying that that was that the base plate was way too low, so they decided to build an extension you could click on, and then that button was just. Well, 
a little bit too low as well. So that should ideally have been a little bit higher to make it more comfortable. On, uh, on the side of the joystick, there is a small uh, analog stick, which um, I use for maneuvering, strafing left and right and up and down. So very useful when uh, when docking at a station. You can also click it as a as a button. I wouldn't recommend doing that using that function because when you do it, you will very easily uh, move the joystick around, which is often not something you want. So I would either use it as a as a click or as a joystick itself. That that was something I initially had a little bit of trouble with the joystick's position here because I was used to having a rest where you could rest your thumb when you're not using it. And because the top of the joystick is very crowded, there's no room up there to rest your thumb either. Um, so I, originally I thought that it was a little bit annoying that there was no proper way to rest your thumb without um, pushing on some buttons or moving a joystick. But after using it for a while, I'm just beginning to rest it here on the side of the joystick, as you can see my uh, my hand here. So this would be this would be how I would be using the joystick. Sometimes I would maybe rest it up here. Um, as you can see, just under the uh, the silver hat here, you can rest your thumb here, then move it down whenever you need that, and you have access to all these buttons up here as well. Um, the base plate of uh, the base box here is uh, quite uh, quite solid. Weight is pretty good. It's uh, not going to move around um, at all. The joystick, of course, has yaw. You can yaw it left and right. Springs back quite nicely. Um, you cannot adjust the springiness of the yaw, but you can adjust how... The, the tension on the joystick, how heavy the joystick is, because by simply screwing on the uh, on the base here, you can simply unplug the whole joystick, and it's it's quite an easy thing. You just unscrew it, the whole joystick comes off, and you now have access to the whole assembly underneath here, and you can replace the spring. The joystick comes with four different sizes of springs, so you can adjust the um, the tension, how heavy the joystick feels. It is a little fiddly, so it's not something you're going to be doing in game uh, while playing. They just change the um, change that up. So if you're planning to change out while switching between ships, I wouldn't recommend that. But at least you can adjust that um, as you see fit. And again, putting it back on is just putting it on and tightening down that screw, and there you go, joystick is now ready to use. So uh, luckily, that's very easy to do. the The travel on joystick is okay. And um, one thing that I feel is a little, uh, uh, what to say, uh, well, it could have been better, is that the, the area in which the joystick can travel is a square. That means there are corners um, where you can go to a side, it will then move up along a wall until it hits the top of a, in, at, it is at a corner, you can move along the side and the same on the other at the sides. Ideally, I wanted that to be a circle so you could move the joystick and around in a circle in a more fluent manner rather than having that. Uh, motion if you are moving all the way out to uh, to the side of course but of course if you're not going all the way to the edge you can of course have that smooth motion the sensors in this is extremely sensitive um there's no hardware death zone quite the opposite actually i had to do a software oh, sorry i had to do the software death zone because the sensors were simply so sensitive that sometimes the the slightest as you can see here there's a slight amount of uh, of play in the joystick here in the center position and that is enough to trigger the sensors where you would then slowly begin to rotate left or right or pitch up and down depending on where the joystick ended up seating itself so i had to, to set a small dead zone at the center of the joystick just to avoid that um, but again, it's you can pretty much adjust the dead zone all the way down to um, um, to where it would almost always move when you if the joystick's not fully centered so um so that's the joystick. Let's move over and talk about the throttle. So here we have the throttle unit. Um, again, if there's one thing to summarize this, that will be buttons, knobs, and switches. That's pretty much all there is on this. It's a lot of them. But let's go over them. Over here at the beginning, we have a mode switch, which of course alters all the functionality of all the buttons, if you want to do that. Me giving you a ton of uh, of different options and you are most likely going to have more switches and knobs and buttons to push than you are ever going to need even in a game like Elite Dangerous. So personally I don't use the mode switch. I should say that it seems like the back uh, light on the mode switch here cannot be changed as green by default I think. Um, but uh, at least I've, I I couldn't change it. All the, other, all the other buttons here are backlit as well or have accent colors. Um, and they can very easily be uh, be changed in uh, in the software. 
here at the bottom of the base we have uh, three switches which are um, momentary so they go go back to the center position and they can be moved either up and down again nice uh, nice clicky feel i use this for lowering landing gear cargo scoop um opening galaxy maps closing galaxy maps stuff like that we have these guards around them to prevent you from doing accidental activations um and i think they judge the height of those guards perfectly because they are just lower than the top of the switch so it's not they're high enough that you're not going to accidentally activate the switch, but they're low enough that they're not going to interfere when you actually want to activate the switch. So they did that very, very nicely. Moving over here to the site, um, we have two analogs. These have a, a certain range, so they have a min and a max value, and you can then just analogly move those between those two values. I use one of these for sensors, uh, so I can increase and decrease my uh, sensor range, and the other one is not in use um, for me. Then further up the side here, we have four more switches. They are uh, identical to the ones we had at the base. They are two ways and they are momentary switches. Um, kind of an odd placement, moving them like in a six stack uh, motion, but I'll get back to these and the placement of these uh, in a little bit. Um, again, weight of the base plate is slightly heavier than on the, um, on the throttle, which is needed because let's move on to the main uh, throttle here. Same um, type of plastic as on the on the, on the joystick, because uh, so so that that's that's all good. But when you get this out of the box, and this is one of the main complaints that many people have, is that the throttle is extremely heavy. It takes a lot of force to move, and that's something you have to learn to use. And I should say now, after using this for a couple of months, that it does loosen up quite a bit, and now it's actually uh, in a very comfortable position. But when you get it out of the box. Even the lowest tension on the throttle is still a very, um, very heavy throttle. And a play style that, that I've adopted after being in using the throttle is that you need to you need to remember just not to use a lot of force on your, on, when you're moving your throttle around. Because regardless of how much force you push on it, there's, it seems to be like uh, there's just a limit to how quickly this thing will move. So moving, pu putting twice as much force on it will not move the throttle twice as quickly. S but... So by using a very, very light touch, you can actually easily move the throttle back and forth. And the travel on the, on the throttle is still faster than your ship is going to accelerate in the game. So it's not like that's going to hold you back. It's just a, a different way of playing, especially when you come from a throttle like the one on the X-52, which is a lot lighter and you can very easily push your throttle forward and pull it back very quickly. You have to do this in a more smooth fluent motion and that's something you will um you will pretty quickly adapt to um so that's not been uh, been an issue it took a little bit of getting used to but once you get used to it, it's not an issue i should say with the heavy throttle that moving the throttle back and forth quickly like this will um, lighten it up so that now it feels a lot lighter um and you can get it to a point where it it almost feels like there is next to no resistance in the throttle um, but after you then let it sit for a while, the tension will come back. So you can have over time, even within play sessions, that the um, that the tension on the throttle will change, um, which is of course not desired. Another thing that I really not like about the throttle here is the side here. We have two four-way, these two four-way silver switches here. We have an analog stick similar to the one on the joystick. These of course analog and with the click functionality. We have a single push button, this one I use for boost, and we have a switch up here, um, you can turn back and forth. I use this for forward and reverse. Um, it takes a little uh, a little fiddling by going into the software, I bound this to scroll lock, and then I bound scroll lock to be my uh, to be my uh, my reverse key, and then you can use this to throttle your going forward or going backwards. Um, so that's quite nice, you can make that work, and, and that feels, uh, feels pretty good, nice click whenever it's at the two end positions. But the problem I have with all these small silver switches here is they are so tightly packed together. Same goes with the joystick here. It's a really, really odd placement of a joystick. And you can see here when the throttle is in the full forward position, how close these um, these sticks are to these silver, um, silver switches down here. And that means that you will very easily end up pushing on these small hats whenever you use these uh, toggle switches down here. And the same thing, you can see here, if I wanted to move one of these um, 
one of these silver hats, I would very easily end up pushing the analog stick around or I would end up pushing one of the other sticks when I want to move it in a specific direction. So it's simply too cramped for down in this area of the joystick or the throttle to, to use these comfortably. That is why I've decided not to use them at all. I don't use any of these hat switches uh, or the analog stick at all. I do use the blue button here for, um, for boost, but that is about it. Moving further forward on the joist on the throttle, <laughs> we have two knobs here where you can turn. These are again, uh, as the other ones, they have a, a start and a stop position, and they also have a small notch at the center. So I use these to um, to control the camera in the galaxy map to either zoom in, zoom out, or move the camera vertically up or down. Um, Something that, that I feel they have used very well for because they have that center notch so you know when they are in the neutral position. These knobs here of course can also be pushed, which, which I'm going to use the top one here for activating my jump drive and the bottom one here I use to go straight into Super Cruise in case my, uh, my target system is obscured by a planet or something else. I can go straight into Super Cruise. Let's move over to the back of, um, of the throttle unit here. We have two uh, push buttons and we have a two-way hat. I don't know why they didn't make this four-way because it's only two-way. It goes only up and down. I use these to navigate around my different panels like navigation panels, timing panels, comms panels, those kind of thing. Uh, which might seem a little odd to some people but the reason why I use these for that is because I come from an X52 where they have a four-way hat here on the back and I use that four-way hat to maneuver around the menus and maneuver around the different uh, panels. Um, so it just felt natural to me that I kept it in that area. So that's why I've done it like that using those for, for that. Um, and then finally here on this other side, we have a simple scroll wheel that you can use to, uh, to scroll up uh, wherever you want to scroll in. It's basically just a scroll wheel. And then we have the tension uh, knob down here where you can adjust the tension on the, uh, on the throttle. Now, Apart from all the buttons here on the, on the right side of the throttle being too close together, one of the other issues I have with it is the seam here between the two half of the plastic that makes up the throttle handle. Um, there is a small edge here, which can be a little annoying if you move your hand over the throttle a lot. Um, that edge will definitely be noticeable. Um, so that's something I wish they would have made a little bit more smooth, that transition even, maybe moving the seam um, further back on the throttle would also have been very, very nice if they've done that instead. But this is how it is, and this is what we have to uh, to work with. The uh, throttle itself, as you have probably guessed, is a two or dual throttle. So you can go ahead and you can split it up, and you can then have two separate throttles. This is not something that's actually supported in a game like Elite Dangerous. I think it's supported in uh, in the space in a game like uh, Star Citizens. So uh, you can use it in that. But for Elite, I would definitely recommend having the two halves of the throttle locked together so they work as a, uh, as a single throttle. Now, unfortunately, there is a lot of play in the two halves of the throttle, meaning that the gap between the two throttles, when you begin to use it, will, will move together, um, which also is a little, well, it, it makes it feel a little bit less premium when you have that small play in, um, in the two halves of the throttle here. But again, it's very nitpicky that, uh, but I know some people find that annoying when when you can feel that gap between the two halves of the throttle move together, and it kind of pinches you a little bit. But anyway, that is um, that's the tour of the uh, actual joystick and on the uh, of the throttle and what I uh, use it for, what I think about it, the problems I've encountered. Not encountered any um, quality issues with stuff breaking on it. But um, let's go over and let's have a look at the included software that comes with this thing. This is the included software that comes with the uh, joystick and the throttle itself that we use to, uh, to set it up. UI-wise, it's okay. I mean, it's fairly intuitive. You can program, uh, which does exactly what you can say. You can see there are separated units. So you can go, let's say, go to the joystick. And here we have all the different mouse buttons. And when you highlight them, they actually highlight where they are on the joystick. It's very intuitive, easy to use. Not nothing to complain about here. Same thing here. You can see the I think I found that one key somewhere. There we go. Scroll lock. You can see that's the my forward reverse thing. You can even go here apparently and click on it and it'll fast forward. So nothing wrong here. It's just fine and uh, that's that's okay. UI wise, setting wise, 
in here you have a very good actually selection of options where you can set dead zones you can set specific curves depending on your uh, um on your, your needs you can even set a uh, um like different kind of bends it all depends on what you need it for and so maybe you want to have a very high sensitivity when it's close to the center um or maybe a low sensitivity when it's further away and you can move the stick around here because you're now moving the joystick and we get a live feed of what it's doing and where it's at. so on on that part it's pretty good now I should say open oh, here LED brightness you can set the LED settings in here change the colors and do whatever you want to do so if I say you wanted this maybe to be a little bit more orange you can go and I can can apply that anyway um so that's again all good and that works exactly as you would expect but there are a lot behind the scenes that more than just a pretty UI you see the the software here is from my point of view good looking but uh, the behind the scenes thing is really really crap to be honest it I have had so many issues with the software or the drivers for this joystick that you will not believe it for instance the major issues I have with it is if I unplug either of the units if I unplug the joystick or the throttle while the computer is on the whole thing freezes off I'm not talking about that the the driver software here is freezing up no 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 no. the whole computer completely freezes up if I unplug it I, I mean these are USB they should be hot pluggable you should you can plug them in while your computer's okay while your computer's on that's all fine unplugging you will have to shut them down completely plug them out and boot up again otherwise your whole system's gonna freeze up um and I've had the, I mean, it's not been that bad yet but I had it happen once with an, uh, another device I think it was a USB stick that I unplugged um, that also froze up the computer and that is after I've only had these issues after I installed this piece of software so that is not really good and historically the software have had a tendency to cause um, cause ghost presses on some of the keys I know some other people who have the same joystick who have talked to have have had issues with ghost presses whether those are caused by a hardware malfunction or a software malfunction I'm not sure I have not had any issues with ghost pressing but it might have something to do with power delivery to the to the system I'm running this off a separate USB 3 card that has uh, has a separate power source well it's it's a PCIe card so it's drawing power directly from um, um that but it has external power as well so you can draw power from the from directly from the PCU so if it's a power delivery issue it might be that's it because I've not had any, any issues with ghost presses but I know other people have and some people seem to think that it is caused by this very very blocky software which frankly wouldn't surprise me because the joystick in itself hardware wise feels good it's a it feels like a well-built joystick there are a few designs flaws sure I mean we talked about those but the software is really really lacking uh, UI wise pretty but the background thing is is rubbish if you ask me um, so would I recommend this for Elite Dangerous or for any other space sim game for that matter um, well I've I've been really struggling um, and I would say there are better alternatives there are a lot better alternatives and if I were to go out and buy a new Hotas today I would go back and I would buy the X52 Pro again the one I had before um, it was at least for especially for Elite Dangerous it was a lot a lot smoother experience and I've had at that for many many years without any issues and only after many many hours of gameplay it's finally beginning to break down um, due to wear and tear but that is to be expected so if you are looking for a HOTAS I would recommend um, unless you can lift I mean, unless you feel like you need the extra buttons if you really feel like I need the extra buttons you can live with a close layout of the some of the hats on the joystick and you can live with the bulky software then sure then the x52 is the perfect joystick for you 
But if you want something that's a little bit more stable um, and that's slightly better integrated with Elite Dangerous, then I would go f uh, for the uh, X52 Pro if you're looking for something in the same price range. Um, if you have a little bit extra to spend, then maybe you should look at the Frostmaster Warthog. I've never had, I never tried that joystick, um, but it is quite a bit more expensive than, uh, than this one. So, again, I, I'm not going to recommend the, the Warthog because I've never tried it, never actually had my hands on a joystick like that. So I, I, I don't want to recommend that. But at least I think my recommendations for most people would be go with the X52 Pro rather than the X56. Um, I am going to keep my X56. I am pretty happy with it because I've, I've so far been spared by a lot of the issues. And not unplugging my joystick is an acceptable compromise. But again... Um, yeah, that is, uh, that is my recommendation. That is my review. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a like. And remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll have more reviews upcoming. I am currently working on something very, very neat that I think a lot of you guys will find very, very interesting. Um, still trying to get everything sorted out, but uh, you'll see that sometime, hopefully soon. Um, but until then, um, I'll see you guys in space.